yang teramat mulia Tunggu Tuan Pahang Ampun Tuanku Beribu-ribu ampun Sembah Patik mohon diampun Patik mohon meneruskan Persembahan ucapan Patik Di dalam bahasa Inggeris A very good morning Her Royal Highness The Crown Princess Of Pahang Tunku Haja Asisa Amina Maibuna Iskandaria Binti Amrahum Amuta Wakil Allah Sultan Iskandar Al Haj Yang amat berbahagia Fatin Sri Utama Datuk Wira Haja Fatila Binti Abdullah Wife of the Honorable Chief Minister of Melaka Yang berbahagia Datin Sri Haja Rafia Hanim Binti Haji Johari Wife of the Honorable State Secretary of Melaka Yang berbahagia Datin Wira Haja Halima Binti Babel Wife of the Honorable Melaka State Assembly Speaker Datuk Datuk Datin Datin Miss Chin Vijaya MD of Makota Medical Center and Group CEO of Health Management International Limited Dr. S. Selwa, our business partners and associates all the eminent doctors from Makota Medical Center and beyond our friends from the media distinguished guests ladies and gentlemen it is my pleasure to be here and I'm happy to affirm that Makota Medical Center is a strong advocate for laparoscopic surgery which is also known as minimally invasive surgery We believe that this practice benefits all and it is currently being performed by many of Makota Medical Center's consultant specialists in disciplines such as general surgery, orthopedics urology and of course gynecology which is our focus in this morning one of our objective is to ensure patients are aware of the options available to them so they can make well-informed decisions in relation to their well-being ladies and gentlemen laparoscopic surgery has proven to be an effective treatment in many medical procedures compared to conventional open surgery. New inventions of cutting-edge equipment, operative devices and accessories have enabled more advanced pictorial peritoneal surgery to be undertaken laparoscopically with high level of safety and confidence with minimal human tissue damage. Thanks to technology and innovation, Gynecological procedures such as removal of ovarian cysts, endometriosis, uterine fibroid, and hysterectomy can now be treated through laparoscopic surgery. And it's providing women greater convenience and tremendous comfort, and thanks to faster recovery, lower risk of infection, and less pain for most of the patients. However, even with so many benefits surrounding laparoscopic surgery, many women are either unaware or skeptical about these advanced techniques that offer minimum pain, extremely low levels of infection, and faster recovery. As a medical facility, our patients' recovery and well-being is our utmost priority. Therefore, we believe that it is our responsibility to create the awareness and dispel certain inaccurate belief that has been keeping many women from seeking these proven surgical treatments. With the expertise of our consultant specialists, including our consultant obstetricians and gynecologist, Dr. S. Selva, we are confident that we will be able to continue to uphold our commitments in providing the highest level of quality of treatment and care to our patients. In a short while, you will hear from Dr. Selma who will elaborate on how the benefit of laparoscopic surgery can be used to treat various gynecological conditions. On that note, 
I would like to congratulate Dr. Xiaowen on the launch of his insightful book. We are confident this briefing and Dr. Selva's book, as well as with all of your support, we will address many concerns and shine a brighter light on the advantages of laparoscopic surgery for the benefit of our community. Thank you. Very good morning, Her Royal Highness, the Crown Princess of Pahang, Tunku Haja Haziza Amina Maimuna Iskandaria Binti Al Marhum Al Mutawakil Alala Sultan Iskandar Al Haj, Young Ahmad Bur Bahagia Datin Sri Utama, Datuk Bira Haja Fadila Binti Abdullah, wife of the Honourable Chief Minister of Malacca. Young Bur Bahagia, Datin Sri Haja Rafia, Hanim Binti Haj, Haji Johari, wife of the Honorable State Secretary of Malacca. Young Bur Bahagia, Datin Wira Haja Halima Binti Baba, wife of the Honorable Malacca State Assembly Speaker. Datuk Datuk Datin Datin, Mr. Stanley Lam, CEO of Makota Medical Center, Dr. S. Selva, our business partners and associates, our distinguished doctors from Makota Medical Center and beyond, our friends from the media, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us here today. I would also like to sincerely thank Her Royal Highness for making the journey from Pahang to grace this occasion. Her presence here her presence here is a clear indication of her commitment to her foundation, the Tunku Aziza Fertility Foundation, and its cause to help women across Malaysia. I'm proud to be here with all of you for this seminar organized by Makota Medical Center. As the largest private tertiary hospital in South Malaysia for over 23 years, Makota Medical Center has been committed in providing the best healthcare solutions that address the needs of patients at an affordable cost. Our team of approximately 1,000 employees and 90 resident consultant specialists work together to deliver quality healthcare services with a passion for care and excellence. Our services adhere to international medical standards and governance processes. We pride ourselves in providing a full range of treatment options, the best possible healthcare services and options to our patients, using advanced medical technologies, which are safe and effective, to result in the best care and cost savings. Our seminar today focuses on laparoscopic or minimally invasive surgery using advanced medical technologies for generally faster recovery, lower risk of infection, and less pain. Ladies and gentlemen, last year, Makota Medical Center treated more than 300,000 patients with approximately 25% comprising patients from around the region, including Indonesia, Singapore, and Cambodia. We anticipate an increase in these numbers as Malaysia's medical tourism market is expected to grow at a compounded annual growth rate of 18.5%, according to estimates from Frost and Sullivan. As we continue to champion newer technologies such as laparoscopic surgery to address the clinical needs and increasing expectations from our patients, we have made investments in expanding our facility, investing in new medical equipment, and continuous upgrading of our staff. These investments enable us to better serve our growing number of patients and demonstrate our commitment and dedication to human life, as well as the provision of quality healthcare treatments and the care that our patients deserve. With the fullest support received from Health Management International, HMI, 
we are confident that Makota Medical Center will continue to uphold its mission of providing quality healthcare services to all patients and contribute to the health and well-being of the communities we serve in Malaysia and the region. I join Stanley in congratulating Dr. Selva on his book and thank him for his efforts and contribution to Makota Medical Center. I'm confident and wish everyone you know, a very uh, productive and uh, useful seminar and I'm sure you'll find the rest of the proceedings very educational. Thank you very much. Salam hormat dan salam sejahtera. Menghadap di bawah duli yang teramat mulia, Tunku Puan Pahang, ampun tuanku, beribu-ribu ampun, sembah patik mohon diampun. Patik mohon meneruskan persembahan ucapan patik di dalam bahasa Inggeris. A very good morning. Her Royal Highness, the Crown Princess of Pahang, Tunku Hajah Azizah Aminah Maimunah Iskandaraya, Binti Almarhum Al Mutawakil Alalah Sultan Iskandar Al Haj. Yang amat berbahagia, Datin Sri Utama Datuk Wira Hajah Fadilah binti Abdullah, wife of the Honourable Chief Minister of Malaysia. Yang berbahagia, Datin Sri Hajah Rafia Hanim binti Haji Johari, wife of the Honourable State Secretary of Malaysia. Yang berbahagia, Datin Mira Haja Halimah binti Baba, wife of the Honourable Malacca State Assembly Speaker. Ms. Chin Wei Jia, Managing Director of Makota Medical Center and Group CEO of Health Management International Limited. Mr. Stanley Lam, Chief Executive Officer, Makota Medical Center, Malacca. Professor Dr. Nachi Nachiapan, Deputy Dean, Manipal Medical College. Distinguished guests, Members of the media, friends, ladies and gentlemen. Firstly, I would like to thank all of you all for taking the time off on this weekday to attend this book launch. I have been interested in the field of laparoscopy or keyhole surgery for a very long time. Although gynecologists have been performing laparoscopy for many decades, the technique of performing surgery by laparoscopy only started gaining of, uh, popularity in the late 1980s when I was a registrar at the Sultana Amina Hospital in Johor Bahru under the tutelage of Dato Dr. Alex Matthews. <clears throat> Laparoscopic surgery was very new at that time and my boss was kind and brave enough to allow a young trainee try his hands at this new technique. I'm deeply grateful to him for being a great source of motivation and encouragement. Dr. Alex unfortunately could not attend this function. He sends his regard to Tunku because he is overseas, he is in Cape Town at this, at this moment. After returning from the United Kingdom in 1992 with my MRCOG, which is a specialist degree for the obstetricians and gynecologists, I decided to continue improving my skill in keyhole surgery. But unfortunately, there were not many teachers in this field in Malaysia. In 1994, the CEO of Makota Medical Center, Mr. Jack Chia, offered me a job as a consultant obstetrician and gynecologist at the newly built hospital Makota Medical Center in Malacca. So I moved from Johor Bahru, which is my home state, to Malacca. And I've been there, I've been in Makota Medical Center still then, since then. This is Dr. Jack Shah, right in the center. I was also given a two months training stint under the renowned Professor Song Kui Yong at the Chang'an Memorial Hospital in Taiwan. I, this is a photograph of uh, Professor Song whom I took with him uh, just last year in Taipei. As a committed laparoscopic surgeon, I have performed more than 5,000 cases in Makota Medical Center over the last 24 years. Thank you. In 1997, I went to King's College in London to train in in vitro fertilization, IVF. On returning from London, we started the Makuta IVF Center. This is the Makuta IVF Center when we first started in 1997. 
In the 1990s, in Malaysia, the public was not well informed about either IVF or laparoscopic surgery. In fact, one of my IVF patients, one of my first IVF pregnancies, the pregnant mother-to-be did not even want her family to know that she was conceived by IVF. IVF is a more recent technology compared to laparoscopic surgery, yet even now, most people have heard of IVF, but not laparoscopic surgery, even the very well educated. Why is this so? The reason is that IVF is promoted by the fertility industry. This is a very big industry. And at the end of the entire process, there's always something to show a baby. It is always wonderful when a lady trying to conceive for 10 years or more finally delivers a baby or even a pair of twins. This is our first IVF pregnancy which was delivered in 1998. And this is a photograph that we took when all of us looked young at the time. <laughs> and at the same time, this girl is now 18 years old. She's in the center. She came to visit us and spend one week with us and she wants to become a doctor. It's kind of motivated by uh, our work. We have been performing IVF successfully at Makuta Medical Center for the past 20 years. We started in 1997. And these are some of our success. They include quadruplets, triplets, twins, and so on. In fact, Makota Medical Center is the first center to have the first IVF baby born in 2006 under the sponsorship of the Tunku Aziza Fertility Foundation. They were born with her. And uh, Madam Shanti is here with us today with her son. Her son is now 12 years old. Laparoscopic surgery, however, is not well known as IVF, as the industry maybe is not interested in promoting it. We will we'll work on that. As a past president of the Obstetrical Gynecological Society of Malaysia, as well as a chairman of the Endoscopic Subcommittee, it's my job to promote laparoscopic surgery among gynecologists in Malaysia. However, the uptake of this surgery among gynecologists is poor. The reason is that it takes a long time to train as a laparoscopic surgeon and also the remuneration for performing laparoscopic surgery is not very good. For example, a doctor gets paid the same amount whether he performs the surgery by keyhole surgery, which is much more difficult, much more taxing and much more skillful than traditional open surgery. That's probably one of the reasons. Moreover, the public is not aware of the availability and benefits of laparoscopic surgery. I also have great difficulty in gaining the interest of the media to inform the public about laparoscopic surgery. As a result of all these difficulties, I decided to write a book to educate the public on this type of surgery. It took me four years to write this book. It has been written in simple English so that the public can understand it. I would like to thank my wife, Saro, who is an English literature major, for helping me make this book an easy read for my doctors. The first part of the book, I have discussed common diseases in women. In the second part, all the procedures that we perform by laparoscopy is discussed. And in the third part, Another aspect of uh, minimally invasive surgery, namely hysteroscopy and hysteroscopic surgery, is discussed. I've also spent a great deal of time creating videos so that after reading a chapter, you'll be able to watch the accompanying video to further enhance the understanding of the topic. These videos can be scanned using your QR code and watched on your mobile phone. I've also created an app so that you can easily watch all these videos on your handphone. This app was created by my friend Adrian, who is also here with us today. So all this to make your understanding easier and better. And I hope that will, I will get a Malay version and a Mandarin version and an Indonesian version soon. This is a, I'm going to show you a short segment of the videos that describe uh, laparoscopic surgery and its benefit. Videos that accompany this book and all the videos, including the animations, are personally made by me.
as, as a fertility specialist, as well as a laparoscopic surgeon, I have found that many of my patients who have difficulties in conceiving with diseases such as fibroids, endometriosis, could conceive spontaneously without IVF after undergoing good keyhole surgery. There are two advancements in laparoscopic surgery that I would like to highlight, namely 3D laparoscopy and single incision laparoscopy. Traditionally, laparoscopy surgery is performed using 2D monitors, but over the last three years, I've been performing laparoscopy using 3D laparoscopy, laparoscope, which makes the surgery safer and more convenient. It is so, this is how we perform, this, these are the advances, 3D laparoscopy and single incision laparoscopy, and this is 3D laparoscopy. And this is how we perform 3D laparoscopies. We really look cool with dark glasses, because we have to wear these glasses when we perform this surgery. And we have uh, this technology available in the mini, uh, mini exhibition, that you can see them, how different it is, uh, the 3D laparoscopy, as well as 2D laparoscopy. In some patients, I can perform the surgery using only one incision hidden in the umbilicus. This is called single incision laparoscopic surgery. This video shows how it is done. It is a little bit gory. I don't know whether Tunku doesn't like to see this, but let's just, just show those who, are, those who are doctors will be able to see it. Here we're placing the trocar into the umbilicus, and then we place in two other trocars side by side, and through the umbilicus, we perform the surgery. And this is how it looks in the abdomen, the three trochas in the umbilicus. And with these three trochas, uh, surgery is performed. And this is called single incision laparoscopic surgery. And uh, uh, several surgeries can be performed by this technique. The advantage is the incision is just a small 2 to 2.5 millimeter incision in the umbilicus. And when it heals, you can't see any, any uh, lesions at all. There are many people I would like to thank in my career as a gynecologist and a laparoscopic surgeon, but I'm not going to mention any names here as in a part appear like an Oscar speech. I have to acknowledge, I have to acknowledge all of them in my book. I would also once again like to thank your Royal Highness for gracing this occasion. This is a newspaper cutting about the first TAF or Tunku Aziza fertility sponsored baby the IVF was performed by me and my team at Makuta Medical Center and delivered at Makuta Medical Center. A Makuta Medical Center and Makuta IVF have this bond with your Royal Highness because of this occasion. In fact, three of the TAF sponsored IVF babies conceived in Makuta Medical Center are here today, namely Madam Shanti. I don't know whether Shanti can you stand up? <laughs> Madam Kang. And also Juan Rina, Juan Rina Ariati. Thank you for coming to this occasion, making it, uh, making it a happy occasion for Tungku. Because of your Royal Highness' dedication towards helping childless couple achieve a pregnancy, part of the profits of the sale of my book will be donated to the Tungku Aziza Fertility Foundation. I would also like to thank the press beforehand for the great articles that you are going to write on the benefits of laparoscopic surgery in gynecology to help educate women. This is especially so that this month is dedicated to women. My thanks to the industry for putting up a mini exhibition. Please visit the exhibition and learn about laparoscopic surgery or keyhole surgery, which has been my passion for the last uh, almost 30 years. If there is an interest, I will give a full lecture on laparoscopic surgery after this official function, and we will be following up this occasion with a series of lectures to educate the public on the benefits and the availability of laparoscopic surgery. Thank you. Terima kasih. Sia sia. Nandri. To further enhance the understanding of laparoscopic surgery, 
we are going to have a sharing session. Uh, two, of our, two, of our, two of my patients who have operated over the last few years have agreed to come and tell you all in their own words the benefits of keyhole surgery. So uh, we will first invite um, Mrs. Cecilia Tan Suin to come on stage. Laparoscopic surgery. Thank you, Cecilia. Uh, to make it easy, I'm going to ask her some questions and then uh, see uh, what she feels about keyhole surgery. My first question is, how did you hear about keyhole surgery? Um, come to this keyhole surgery due to my natural job and uh, I deal with some doctors and more or less I heard from the doctors but I didn't go into details in it till the day come to my own case then I know it from Dr. Silva. Yeah. Well, how is your experience before and after you have undergone keyhole surgery? Okay, actually before that, uh, all this while I know as just now doctor say, uh, all the surgery is done in the traditional open surgery. So after I heard from Dr. Silva say that my surgery can undergo by keyhole, it's really a big relief to me. I can escape from the pain. That, that is the, the most happiest thing in my life that I heard of is at that moment. Would you recommend this surgery to any of your friends? Oh yes, definitely. This is a very good thing that I strongly recommend and I encourage people to go for keyhole. Yeah, it is. Anything else you'd like to share with us? Yeah, rather than the uh, traditional uh, open surgery, then this keyhole surgery is really um, uh, less pain, more gain, and also a speedy recovery and back to the uh, our daily activities very fast, you see. So this is the, the thing that I feel that strongly recommended on this keyhole surgery. I thank you thank so very much, Doctor. Yeah. Thank you, thank you very much. Pada masa itu beliau ada satu anak yang berumur 4 tahun dan beliau mengalami kesusahan untuk mendapatkan cahaya mata yang kedua. Dan selepas dijalankan pembedahan operasi laparoskopi, beliau hamil serta-merta sebenarnya secara natural dan telah bersalin anak yang kedua pada bulan Disember tahun 2016. So terima kasih telah datang ke sini. Jangan risau. <laughs> okay, saya akan tanya beliau, uh, beliau beberapa soalan. Soalan pertama adalah bagaimanakah Puan tahu mengenai pembedahan laparoskopi? Okay, terima kasih Dr. Uh, saya tahu mengenai pembedahan laparoskopi daripada jiran saya uh, sebab dia pun mengalami penyakit yang sama lah endometriosis dan dia telah buat laparoskopi terlebih dahulu Okey, baik uh, Bagaimanakah pengalaman Puan sebelum dan selepas menjalankan pem, uh, pembedahan laparoskopi? Uh, sebenarnya kalau sebelum tu macam kalau saya period kan datang bulan saya ada sengugut yang teruk lah period pin yang teruk kemudian uh, Bila tu rasa sakit Kemudian bila lepas laparoskopi Alhamdulillah uh, Dah normal lah Tak ada period pain Dan serta-merta dah hamil uh, Alhamdulillah Adakah Puan akan merekomendasikan uh, Perasa ini kepada kawan-kawan Puan? Uh, ya yes, saya akan Rekomen kepada kawan saya sebab uh, Pembedahan ni dia Tidak sakit dan dia Cepat pulih Okey Dan adakah apa-apa lain yang ingin uh, Puan beritahu kepada kita? Uh, Okey, uh, sebagai kaum wanita, kita kalau datang bulan ke ataupun macam ada uh, rasa period pain yang sangat teruk, kita jangan pandang remeh kerana kita tak tahu apa-apa yang terjadi kat dalam kan? Jadi kita perlu jumpa pakar sakit Puan lah untuk pastikan. Okey, terima kasih.
kerana menunjuk kasih uh, sempena keberangkatan ke bawah duli yang tak memulih tuanku Selamat sejahtera First of all, I would like to congratulate uh, Dr. Selva for his book and behind every man is a woman so it is his wife that I should congratulate as well uh, your husband has just written the notes, but it is you actually that wrote the whole thing in simple English for all of us to understand. So I salute you as well. This is the I will check out my YouTube channel. Okay. Uh, sebagaimana uh, Dr. Uh, Dr. Selva sendiri cakap tadi, ada dua ya, laparotomi dan uh, laprosco laparoscopy. Uh, bagi saya yang berdiri di sini, saya telah menjalani uh, kedua-duanya ya uh, di dalam uh, usaha saya untuk uh, mendapatkan anak in my in you know, through the years of uh, trying to make to make a baby. That's why uh, yesterday my husband asked me, why are you going to Melaka? I said, I'm going to launch a book. What's the book? It's about making babies, I said. <laughs> okay. I had to do a laparoscopy because I wasn't getting pregnant and just like um, the Malay girl just now, I wasn't getting my period on time. I, but I, I, was, I was getting period pains as well. And so um, the laparoscopy confirmed that I had endometriosis, which was one of the main causes, the main cause why I was not able uh, to have a child, plus uh, not getting my period as well. And uh, jadi di sini saya mencakapkan bagi mereka uh, yang masih belum ada anak, memang selalu doktor akan menjalankan laparoscopy. Gambar apa yang awak lihat tadi Saya saya pun pernah ada besi tube semua Saya masih ada, I still have the scars ya yeah? Masih ada tanda-tanda laparoscopy Saya rasa saya buat laparoscopy dalam tiga kali juga ya yeah? Sebab itulah uh, apabila saya mengandung Kalau perempuan lain bila dia mengandung nampak pusat terjojol Pusat saya tak terkeluar lah pasal dia dah the book set saya. So that's the beauty of laparoscopy. Yeah? So for those who get pregnant later, you don't, you do not look like some women with their uh, pusat tu terjojol pakai baju tak ada tak ada cantik pun ya. Yeah? <laughs> right? Okay. Uh, saya terpaksa jalankan lah kerana saya dah nak cesarean. <laughs> Jadi yang itu laparoscopy pun tak boleh buat. Right? <laughs> tak boleh lah kan macam mana nak keluar baby ikut cute kecil itu kan? Ya. Yeah. So um, bagi um, dan juga saya um, like uh, uh, apa historically bandar bukan saja bandar bersejarah bagi saya bagi Malaysia juga bandar yang bersejarah bagi saya kerana di sinilah lahirnya anak tah yang pertama dan Jaden ada di sini hari ini ya dah 12 tahun umur ya itu cucu saya yang nombor satu cucu-cucu saya ada dalam 115 saya dan uh, mereka semua bagi saya nenek ya jadi uh, bukan saja uh, anak yang pertama lahir di uh, Melaka tetapi cucu yang ke-100 pun lahir di Melaka. So Melaka begitu uh, bersejarah dan saya ingin mengucapkan terima kasih kepada uh, Dr. Sel dan juga uh, Mahkota Medical Center dalam suami saya itu Mahkota uh, hospital pula jaga nama Mahkota Medical Center dapat melahirkan anak yang pertama dan bukan pakar sakit puan pakar sakit tekupuan pasal tekupuan susah nak dapat anak. Jadi pakar sakit tekupuan lah kan Because that's a joke in my in my family Because they always say oh sakit tekupuan Sakit tekupuan, it's not sakit puan ya yeah? So adalah nama dia tu uh, It rhymes a little bit there So I would like uh, to thank you ya yeah, For for making uh, uh, that uh, what tough one as the cause of the foundation, we wanted to give a chance to other women that tidak kira uh, yang tidak kira bangsa, pada mereka yang tidak um, not able to afford uh, to go to the IVF treatment or the ICSI treatment, which is very expensive, and uh, that you. 
uh, manage dia, dia berlawan lima, uh, empat orang doktor sebenarnya berlawan siapa yang akan melahirkan yang pertama sebenarnya Jeta ni beranak lebih awal sikit sebenarnya satu Cina di Kuala Lumpur dia patut jadi baby yang pertama dia punya marah pasal pasal Melaka beat me, beat me to it dia kata gitu yeah. so um, for re- making my dream come true in helping that that there is a chance for women out there uh, through the proscopy just now um, you have to check actually what's wrong with you the proscopy kerana kat saya puas juga ya berubah di dunia secara tradisional dan secara uh, ini kot hospital memanglah kita punya tukang urut bidang-bidang kata oh beranakan tinggi beranakan rendah sebenarnya mereka tak boleh rasa pun beranakan tu yang apa dia rasa is your bladder am I right? It's right, the bladder is in front The uterus is here, the bladder is here, right? So kalau keadaan tu kan akan tinggi ke rendah ke kat dia tengah Pundi, pundi tu tengah air kencing penuh ke air kencing kurang Itu saja ya <laughs> Because saya pernah berurut malam tadi Dia kata, oh kan akan tinggi Besok pagi saya berurut dengan lain Dia kata, kan akan rendah So please don't believe that You only can, you can actually palpate your pregnancy at three months Am I right? Yes Right? The three months is only that it comes up Okay. Jadi dengan itu saya ucapkan terima kasih kepada Dr. Selva yang telah uh, giving me the honor to launch your book. I thank you very much.